Well, 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 this is why you don't name a storm before the National Hurricane Center does. Patty formed, but it's not in the Caribbean. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis back with you. Before we get into the Caribbean deal, we are going to touch on Patty. It's there. But look at where it's at. It is in the North Atlantic. We are going to have full analysis of the Caribbean system a little bit later on in the video. If you want to skip this, you can find that in the chapters uh, in, the in the description of the video. There is Patty. The Azores is getting some really nasty weather right now. Hurricane Center named this a subtropical storm this morning. Those do get names in this video being recorded on November 2nd, by the way. Uh, started to develop a quasi-warm core. Thunderstorms around the center. That is is good enough for that classification right there. And again, the Azores getting tropical storm conditions as we speak. This is going to continue to work its way towards the east, towards Europe. As we move over the next few days, here is the latest forecast, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. You see it there closing in on parts of northern Spain parts of Portugal. Of course, you've been keeping up with the national headlines. Spain does not need any more rain. You see it there as of the five o'clock Eastern time advisory winds are 65 miles per hour sustained. So again, we could even have some hurricane force gusts uh, through the Azores currently. You see getting closer to Portugal and Northwest Spain as a remnant low by the time we get into early next Tuesday. At the same time, we'll likely be dealing with another named storm. Here is the current outlook from the Hurricane Center. Again, still a high opportunity for tropical development over the next seven days earlier on, on Saturday as well, November 2nd. Hurricane Center designated this disturbance as Invest 97L. So this is when those fancy hurricane models are starting to run on this thing. So we get a little bit better data on this. Hurricane Hunter missions begin on Sunday, November 3rd, and we will really start to get better data as those missions begin. We also have this little disturbance uh, near Puerto Rico. That is not going to become a name storm. That is also out there on YouTube. So again, Please be careful with what you see and who you source because, again, that bubble of thunderstorms around Puerto Rico, that was also not Patty. Nonetheless, those two are going to kind of merge a little bit and eventually work its way toward Jamaica and the Western Caribbean. So we're, I want to show you a couple of things now. This is going to be one model run here. This is going to be the GFS. We're not going to pay attention to exactly where the storm is, but I want to show you what is dictating the steering with this. Then we're going to get into some ensembles, and then I'll show you one hurricane model here as we go forward. And again, gradually as we move through the early stages of next week, we are going to get much better data on this as the Hurricane Hunter missions begin. So we're going to pick this up on Monday, November 4th. And this little swirl, you see it right there, uh, the little blue areas that pop up, that's where we have surface pressure starting to lower a little bit. So by Monday, we'll start to really hone in on getting a storm to develop. And as we watch over the next few days, really from Sunday to Monday, that's when that broad area of low pressure begins to develop. And again, that's why we do have that invest standing for area of investigation. As we take this forward, I think the most confident part in this system is going to be its short-term life impact in the island of Jamaica. So expect tropical storm conditions at least on Jamaica as we get into Monday into Tuesday, Cayman Islands as well, and then also into parts of Central and Western Cuba. So here we go uh, Tuesday into Wednesday now. And I wanted to show you this because, again, this is going to be the more confident stages from uh, the Central and Western Caribbean to Jamaica, to the Cayman Islands, to southern and western Cuba. Now, here we go on Wednesday. The big thing dictating the steering in the short term is going to be this big chunk of high pressure in between Florida, the Bahamas, and in, into Bermuda. That is going to help to guide this thing further to the west over the next couple of days. So you see it right there. So now we have this big bubble. And again, that blue area that you see, that bluish green area, that is going to be the model depicting where it thinks the disturbance is going to be on Thursday, November 7th. So you see kind of closer towards the Dry Tortugas, uh, the Florida Keys. Remember, this is only one model run. I'm going to show you the ensembles to kind of show you the wide range of outcomes we do have with this system. But I wanted to show you uh, what the steering current is so you can kind of get a gauge on 
why the ensembles are showing what they're showing. Also, don't look now, but as we get towards the end of next week, there's also a weird disturbance that has moved off of Africa Super rare for this time of the year. Uh, that could be in play for parts of the Northeast Caribbean towards the end of next week as well. So that's going to be something that we have our eye on. But that's going to be a story for another time, but an early heads up there. And then you see by the time we get to Saturday, at least the GFS wants to put it closer to the northern Gulf. The thing that I really wanted to show you here is and why it's going to be so complex. It's, okay, how strong is this high pressure over to the east of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. And then what happens with this dip in the jet stream? This would suggest, this is the GFS again, a cutoff low hanging around the Colorado area, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. That would help to kind of lift it north a little bit. If this would be a sharper trough, meaning it's not cut off as much and it is able to dig a little further south, it would act to take it back off towards the north and west if the high is stronger and we have this much further north and weaker then it could go further to the west like some models have suggested over the past couple of days that is why this is so complicated typically we do up the ante a little bit with complexity as we get into october and november because we do have those dips in the jet stream getting more involved the weather patterns start to become a little more complex so for that i do want to show you the other weather computer this is going to be weathernerds.org we are looking at the european ensembles so i wanted to show you kind of the steering and again we're not going to pay attention to where that storm was uh exactly with the gfs because that is going to bounce around that's that windshield wiper effect but i wanted to show you what the models are honing on that high pressure to steer it west initially and then that dip potentially cut off low in the west as we get into the early to middle stages of next week so here we go european ensembles are showing things clustered toward jamaica with a western turn to the cayman islands and then we start to get things pretty uncertain as we get into the Gulf of Mexico. So either moving toward Florida, moving towards uh, the West, and then right smack up the middle. So again, this is going to be the solution if uh, we start to see a cutoff low developing, if the trough is sharper, uh, Florida is in play, and then if we have a weaker low, stronger high that would keep the system going to the west so therein lies your three scenarios depending upon what happens with that dip in the jet stream and again we just don't have enough data to confidently make a call that's why we have to continue to look at the ensembles now the gfs is on the weirder side it really has uh it doesn't it's not as robust of a signal certainly we think a storm's going to be there but you see what happens um, it is kind of honing on to a more centralized, a centralized uh, location, northern, maybe northeastern Gulf Coast. We do have a few outliers, again, down in here and a few that are down in here. Uh, but nonetheless, it is really honing in on a cutoff low. Those are going to be the two things that we're going to have to watch over the next few days. That's going to be the homework assignment. Okay, what are the models going to hone in on when it comes to that trough that's going to be ejecting out of the Rockies? So that is the main thing in play here that we're going to watch. I want to show you one of the hurricane models, again, just to give our friends uh, in Jamaica uh, an early heads up here. We're going to be watching this. And again, this is going to be the halves B. So this is one of the hurricane models. And still Monday morning, there's hardly anything there. So again, it is broad. It is weak. It brings Jamaica some very heavy rain, also getting into Haiti. Again, the center is going to be, let me bring out my trusty Telestrator. There's the center. Again, it's hardly anything according to the halves B, um, but some very heavy rain on the western side of Haiti and then also getting into the southeast corner of Cuba. So some flash flooding mudslides are going to be possible there. Let's take this further in time. And now we start to see the low materialize. This is as it gets closer to the Cayman Islands. Here's the southern end of Cuba. Uh, for reference, there's a 995 millibar low uh, tropical storm force system there. And then it starts to ramp it up a little bit as we get it's 991 millibars, lower the pressure, stronger the storm, and then ejects it into the Gulf of Mexico, starting that western and then trajectory, and then starts to lift back north and northeast 
pretty quick. That gets it down to 981, 982. Uh, for our friends in the Caribbean, I'm going to take this back a little more. I'm going to show you a couple of extra models real quick. The other hurricane model is the Hafs A, at least one of them. They're going to be the new ones that are taking over the H Wharf and the H Mon if you've been uh, a weather nerd and following those models, but still has the same kind of solution, although you'll notice it is further to the west. That puts the heavier rain uh, on the eastern side, so some big-time flooding concerns on the island of Jamaica at this time. This is going to be, again, Monday into early Tuesday that we're going to be looking for impacts from possibly a tropical storm Regardless if it gets its act together and gets a name, either it's if it's a depression or a storm, still flash flooding, mudslides going to be the main threat here. I would not be surprised if the Hurricane Center hoists that potential tropical cyclone tag. That's something uh, that they do so they can issue their watches and warnings, uh, put out their official forecast cone, and it's to give people an early heads up when it and when the storm is near land but it's not yet meteorologically and scientifically a tropical cyclone, a tropical system. Again, in the Atlantic, we know them as depressions, storms, and hurricanes given the wind speed. So again, don't be surprised if you do see that potential tropical cyclone tag come out in the very near future because it is going to be impacting land at a uh, very short time. With uh, And again, they want to give you uh, at least a 48-hour heads up. So again, that's for our friends in Jamaica. Now, back to the United States. I do want to talk about uh, what could what scenario could happen. Now, again, if we do get it back into the Gulf, and that's going to be the same thing I just showed you again, the one positive thing is we have seen a couple of cold fronts come through. So the water temperature in the Gulf of Mexico is nowhere near what it was just three, four weeks ago. We had these temperatures in the middle 80s uh, when we were talking about uh, Milton and Helene. Now, right along the coast, we have things, uh, the North Gulf Coast and Florida Gulf Coast, we're talking about low to mid-70s in the Big Bend, uh, upper 70s in southwest Florida, uh, upper 70s to around 80 off Louisiana, off of Alabama, off of Mississippi. A little bit warmer in the Bahamas, uh, Turks and Caicos, low to mid 80s. And then this is where, um, don't have any numbers popping up here, but this is where you see the colors getting darker. This is where we still have water temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. So we do have some room for some strengthening northwest of Jamaica. And then as we get into the extreme southern Gulf, here's our loop current where you see that kind of loop the loop here in between the Yucatan Channel and getting up toward Florida. So any of the strengthening, you see my mouse going crazy there, is going to be done right here and then down uh, closer to the Cayman Islands south of Cuba. Certainly strengthening could happen uh, west of Florida. But the point I'm trying to make is with wind shear around, because we now are in November, we have dips in the jet stream becoming more common. And with the water temperature, certainly on the much cooler side, if this were to come toward Florida, we would likely see this weaken a little bit getting into landfall. So I want to be clear about that still could be dealing with um, a named storm uh, towards the middle and latter stages of the week for somebody along the north and eastern Gulf Coast, uh, but wanted to just be clear about that uh, because they're a lot of hype, a lot of clickbait. Again, not saying we're likely going to get hit by something in the north and east Gulf Coast, but... Um, I just want to throw all of that out there that we do have wind shear in the Gulf and we do have, um, water temperatures near the coast in the low to mid seventies. Again, out in the open waters of the Gulf, right in through here. And then the Caribbean, that is where it will do its strengthening. So we'll not be surprised again, if we do get a hurricane, but it's going to have to do some battling with some, um, not the most ideal conditions, thankfully. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. Again, if you want to be a part of the best weather community on YouTube, on social media, you've come to the right place. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from. We are a no-nonsense weather channel. We don't have the garbage of the clickbait and the hype out there. Uh, that you will find on a lot of areas around YouTube. For my friends in the Caribbean, um, you're going to find some good information on this channel and not naming a storm before the Hurricane Center does for one and not naming a cluster of thunderstorms over Puerto Rico that was never going to be a named storm. That was 100% 
for clicks and um, for scare tactics. And I and I hope uh, if you saw that, that you got some good information from uh, this video. Certainly some flooding going to be possible in parts of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico from those thunderstorms, but you are not going to be dealing with a named storm. Hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend. Be safe. We'll continue to keep you updated. Uh, myself and meteorologist David Nazario, we're here for you guys. We'll catch you soon.